is one continuous assault on all of us. Their basic demand is that we should simply disappear. Well, my friends, that's not going to happen. The only way to defeat these terrorists is to join together and fight them together. That's how we'll defeat terrorism. With political unity and with moral clarity. All right, ladies and gentlemen, again, the man who is acting like he's the leader of the free world compared to the real leader of the free world who uh, went to a baseball game and talked about the need for more black managers in baseball right after the terror attacks. Uh, joining us now is the editor of uh, futureofcapitalism.com. He's a columnist for the New York Sun. Ira Stahl joins us. Hello, Ira. Hi, how are you? Good. Thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. Um, first, let's talk about the contrast here uh, before we get into uh, your piece uh, about the uh, the anti-Israel billboards. Uh, uh, you know, the, the, such a stark contrast between Obama and, Netany and Netanyahu. Yeah, you know, I, I've been joking with some of my friends that I, I'm going to write in Netanyahu on the presidential uh, ballot. <laughs> that wouldn't be bad. Uh, that wouldn't be bad at all. All right, so so with that as the backdrop, and and with the way. Obama has treated uh, Israel and Netanyahu publicly, and with uh, what we know about some of the emails of Hillary Clinton, um, and, we, and one of her top advisors' sons is reportedly a, a, a big, big anti-Israel activist in J Street, I think it is, and, and some of the, uh, the other people who surround Hillary, some say she has Muslim Brotherhood influences. Uh, my question is, um, what is the future of the Israeli-U.S. Uh, relationship if, uh, if Hillary gets in, or you could address what you think it would be if a Republican gets in. And, and what about these anti-Israel billboards that are appearing uh, uh, in your hometown of Worcester, Mass., and elsewhere? What significance do they hold? Well, uh, let's tackle the Hillary question first. I mean, we've already had a, a Clinton presidency, and uh, I was actually in Washington during part of that uh, for the Forward newspaper covering the U.S.-Israel relationship very closely and went and saw uh, President Clinton and Prime Minister Rabin at the White House. Uh, Hillary actually spoke to that same APAC conference where Prime Minister Netanyahu appeared remotely, and she was remembering those days and said she made Rabin go out on the White House balcony uh, when he wanted to smoke cigarettes. So. So, you know, right now, under the strains of President Obama, those Clinton years look pretty good in retrospect. Were they as warm as what was achieved under President George W. Bush? Maybe not, particularly when Clinton was trying at the very end of his term uh, to try to push a final settlement between Israel and, and the PLO. Um, but on the other hand, there, there weren't these huge, dramatic, uh, embarrassing public tiffs uh, at, that you saw with President Obama keeping Prime Minister Netan Netanyahu waiting in the White House. Uh, or going he, out the back door, yeah. <laughs> yeah, or, or Netanyahu coming and speaking to Congress, begging them to reject President Obama's Iran deal. Um, so, you know, I, I think Hillary might actually be an improvement over Obama. Well, any, anybody would be an improvement over Obama, except that Hillary still has a, a disdain for Netanyahu, according to the emails that I've seen and the people around her do, and she's no fan of his, and uh, she doesn't recognize Islamic terror by name. She says Muslims have nothing to do with terror. And her husband did try to give away half of Jerusalem and, and all of the West Bank to the biggest killer of Jews since Hitler. So, right. I mean, so, you know, I, I'll take my chances with the Republican. But but let's 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 go to the billboards. Uh, we got about a minute and a half or less. Tell me what you what, what the billboards say and what you what you fear about the billboards. Well, there are these billboards saying that America gives ten million dollars a day in foreign aid to Israel and that that money could send your kids to college. And it's a real blatant effort to to divide America from Israel by saying somehow that the aid to Israel comes at the expense of aid to American college. In fact, the amount of money we spend to Israel is tiny 
about $3 billion a year compared to the nearly $200 billion a year that taxpayers spend on college aid. It wouldn't make any difference if we cut that off in terms of helping Americans go to college, but it would cost us in terms of uh, our our values, in terms of our defense posture in the Middle East. Oh, absolutely. And it could cost us a lot more in terms of a terror attack on America. Because of the intelligence that we get from Israel. Listen, everybody should read anti-Israel billboards rise as both GOP and Democrats flirt with idea of isolation in the New York Sun. Uh, check it out. Uh, and uh, Ira, I appreciate you coming on. Up next, you. give me five. Don't go away.